What's up fellow hunters, Knox here. Hope you're all having a great day. Today, we'll talk about my top 10 things to prepare us for sunbreak. Let's get right into it. Number one is actually about something not to do, the rebirth melding, and it's about farming talismans. I personally stopped using this method for a while now, and you'll want to consider doing that as well. It's highly likely that we're going to get new melding methods in sunbreak, and if those new methods require us to throw unwanted talismans into the melder as well, it would be a huge waste of talismans and resources to use them for rebirth melding now, since it might soon be a completely outdated melding option. We're way better off saving them up now and using them for new melding methods. Number two is not a necessity, but has the potential to add a lot of value to some of the other things on the list. And that's using the good luck skill. To keep it short, good luck increases our chance of getting more rewards. The skill can influence two of the reward sections, the target and the quest rewards. This means we can get extra monster materials for melding and extra money items like golden eggs for example. You can actually tell which items you got from good luck, as it will say so right below the item. Some people have been saying that you can't get rare items from this skill, but that's just incorrect. As you can see right here, I got a Valstrax orb from good luck, which pretty much speaks for itself. I'll put a couple of good and also less good reward examples on screen so you can get an idea of things. The good luck rewards are marked in green. On average, I've gotten an extra 35,000 zenny and 3 to 4 monster materials from good luck. It's still RNG based so it can fluctuate. And you also may have way better luck than me. Here are two of my good luck builds for example and the two most efficient armor pieces for the skill. We have to make some sacrifices with the skills, but I personally don't mind a quest taking a minute longer for a shot at extra items and cash. It's of course based on everyone's individual experience level, but for me it was about a minute of time difference when I dropped some offense for the good luck skill. If you only have 15 more minutes to play, it won't matter if the quest takes 10 or 12 minutes. So throw on good luck and get the most out of your time. As mentioned, this is not a necessity, so you can decide for yourself if you want to give it a try or not. Number 3 and 4 go hand in hand. Money and melding materials. Let's get the most obvious thing out of the way first. Zenny. We're going to need absolute boatloads of cash to make and upgrade new gear when Sunbreak comes out. I'm sure most of you already know that we can mine in the volcano and flooded forest to make quick and easy cash. A lot like the shiny farming method for materials, I consider those to be a good side option if you need a break from hunting. However, we can make lots of cash by simply choosing the right quest. What we want are quests with a high chance of giving us golden and silver eggs in the rewards, which are worth 20 and 10,000 zenny each. 7 star event quests have the highest chance to give us multiple of these items. And this is where things cross over into the melding materials as well. As we just pointed out, the best quests for extra money items are event quests. So what we want to do is combine that with picking a target that has good value melding materials. These are a few of my favorites as an example. Just pick something that's fun for you and has a good payout. One of the later updates also added the chance to get bonus level 9 tickets from Apex event quests, which are worth 100 melding points each, and we can get up to 10 of these. The highest chance at getting 10 level 9 tickets are the super or emergency Apex quest. If you're up for a challenge, these can really pay off, since we of course also get all the other monster materials including the Apex parts. To make this extra efficient, I suggest bringing gathering palicos so they can steal some extra monster materials for you. Before we move on, here's a bonus money tip. There are quite a few items that kinda get overlooked as a money source. These are a few examples, but there are definitely more. Some of these are worth a lot and we might have tons of them stored up. I was sitting on far over thousand of each of these, for literally no reason. So turn excess materials that cannot be used for melding into cash. Number 5. Practice unused switch skills. Now why do we want to do that? It was recently revealed that we can swap out switch skills during quests in Sunbreak. This opens up a whole new door and allows us to come up with new move combinations. Some of the more unused skills can actually have insane value now that we can just swap them in or out whenever we like. I've already come up with some pretty crazy combinations and I definitely recommend giving some of the unused skills another shot. Number 6. Stocking up on certain rampage tickets. We will likely be needing tons of rampage tickets to ramp up any new weapons we forge or upgrade. The event rampages on screen are the fastest ones to finish and drop tickets from level 5 to 9. I personally don't want to be making or upgrading weapons in Sunbreak and having to go back and get tickets to ramp them up. Aside from that, most rampage weapons themselves have super high potential, so we might want some extra tickets for those as well. Number 7. Forging weapons. Because keep in mind, everything will be getting upgrades. 
and we will not be able to upgrade some of our now endgame weapons until later into Sunbreak. So some of the early and right now underwhelming weapons will become the new go-to standard at the start. The scenario on screen is a pretty good example. Having most of the currently available weapons forged will give you a massive head start when Sunbreak comes out, allowing us to just upgrade into the new versions without having to go back and farm low and high rank materials. If you have a main weapon type you like to play, you might want to consider forging most or even all of the weapons in that category. Number 8. Set up Defensive Dango. Monster and Sunbreak are going to hit a lot harder, especially early on when we don't have master rank armor yet or just don't have very good armor defense-wise. Making sure we have an optimal set of Dango ready to go for multiple occasions can save us a lot of trouble and time. The Dango skills you want are Moxie, Defender High and Elemental Resistance or Booster. Moxie will save you from a fatal hit if your health is above a certain threshold. Defender High functions like Divine Blessing and often reduces damage taken from hits. Your chosen Elemental Resistance increases that by 10. And Booster will temporarily increase attack and defense. Next is farming consumables and crafting items. This one is as self-explanatory as it is important. We're going to face way tougher monsters so we definitely need to be prepared when it comes to our items as well. Here's a list of some essentials we want to stock up on. As you can see, I listed some exchange items as well. Glowngrass Buds and Pale Extract are kind of a must for me. The other two are based on personal demand. Check if you have need for them. I do however suspect that we will be able to gather Glowngrass Buds in Sunbreak, or have other additional means to acquire them. Number 10 is going to be a small bonus tip for extra melding materials. When we're sending out the Meowcenaries, we should never pick an Elder Dragon immediately if we see one. If we take a moment and have a second look, quite often we find an option that will have even more value in terms of melding items. Like the two Gossarag instead of one Camellios and Zenogre here for example. That's because some monsters have items that can drop in stacks of two. Like Gossarag's Ice Block, Magnamalo Soul Prism or Almadron's Golden Sludge. Which can then be worth up to 120 melding points per stack. Always double check before we send them off, so we don't miss out on potentially better melding materials. With all that said, these are my top 10 things to prepare you for Sunbreak. Thanks for watching, take it easy, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.